Good morning. You've been sitting in the sacred silence. You've opened up to the prayer, Reverend Sandra. You sat in the silence to mystic, Reverend Coco. And whether you know it or not, you're doing perhaps the most important thing you can do on a daily basis, to take an inner shower and have an intention to wake up from the intoxicated sleep. Ultimately becomes a dimension of your social contract. All of us have to some degree a social contract that before we leave our home, we've done our cleanliness aspect of life. We've taken a shower, we've brushed our teeth, we've done all of the external showering or bathing. But as one matures spiritually, and, and be aware that one is not a mature human being until they've entered into consciously the spiritual domain. Individuals are moving towards maturity, but until there is an awakening or an inner urge to wake up spiritually, the maturity hasn't quite kicked, kicked in yet, which is why when you look around the world and you see a lot of the, the tumult and the, a lot of the wars and rumors of wars and you see a lot of the greed and avarice and hate, those are immature beings that haven't matured spiritually. The little kids. So, so as we mature, as I was saying, we learn to take an inner shower before we leave the home. An inner shower is when you become very still, quiet, pull away from the world of appearances, away from the world of circumstances and situations, conditions people, places, and things of which the surface mind deems extremely important. However, that's transitory. It's, it's phenomena. It's temporary. It's important to a degree. But the social contract in mature people, spiritually mature, is that we take our inner shower first. We become still, pull away from the world of effects and circumstances look inward, they begin to catch the eternal broadcast that is being broadcast throughout all creation from before the beginning of time and then the burst of time and space when the living one, the divine presence that is infinite, birthed the cosmos, multidimensional universes, solar systems, star systems, galaxies, all of nature, living biology, all of that burst into the scene out of a sense of overflow from nothing at all but an idea and an overflow sense of fulfillment. We're pulling our attention away from the world on a regular basis so that moment by moment by moment, day after day, out of nothing, out of no condition, out of no circumstance, out of no situation, something new gets to come into expression. What we see in the world is an artifact of previously held points of view, positionalities, perspectives, perceptions, opinions. It's an artifact. Individuals are walking in the carcass of the past and forgetting that out of nothing at all, a new idea can emerge every day. But you must have your social contract to be still. Otherwise, people just simply meet the rehashed thoughts and opinions and points of view that you had yesterday, the day before, last week. You get stuck in the muck, become opinionated. Your point of view becomes skewed, limited, and you only see a tad of reality. Just a smidgen. Because most of what you're experiencing are your thoughts about reality, or your thoughts about people, or your thoughts about circumstances and situations. So you're dealing with an artifact, previously held points of view, you're stuck in limited personality and so as you're maturing, what do you say about immature people? Let the dead bury the dead. Those who are sleepwalking, bless them. 
but don't tarry with limited perceptibility. Hang out with individuals who are vision-minded, individuals who are walking in the direction of their awakening, speaking into existence the world they want to live in by first becoming that vibration by being still, opening oneself up to the eternal broadcast and to spiritual insight and revelation that is timeless and eternal and that when it becomes active in one, you become initiated into a more expanded state of awareness and then you're able to walk in the world, you're able to walk in the artifacts of previously held points of view, but you're of a higher frequency and you make a mighty difference on the planet by your vibrational footprint that you're leaving whether individuals know you or not. So you're not caught up in the fame game, being known. You're not caught up in gross materialism. You have matured. Does that mean you don't have your needs met? No. It means manifestation becomes a lot easier because you're not chasing it. You're radiating abundance, love, peace, joy, prosperity, health, vitality, vigor. You're radiating it. You're not chasing it. You're it. You're the vibration of it. And then now you're guided and directed to be and then to do what is necessary to bring the invisible, indivisible, into the visible. People will call it the law of attraction. You'll say, I'm not attracting anything. I already got it. I'm radiating it and allowing it to become visible. The linguistic convenience of the word law of attraction is a sweet, it's a sweet entry level description to help people kind of put their toe into the fact that uh, the circumstances and conditions do not determine one's destiny. This was the Trojan horse that was used in our movie, The Secret, just to sneak it into the population. So that people became interested and oh my God, I can secret that, I can manifest that and then ultimately continue their spiritual trek until they go more expanded into the awareness. I am that. I am what thou art and thou art what I am. And so wherever we are on this continuum of expansion of our awareness, what I want to leave you with today are two things. One. An individual is not a mature being yet if they haven't awakened spiritually. They may be old. They may be 80 years old, maybe 90. Doesn't mean they're, they're, they're spiritually mature yet. It just means they've been on the planet a long time, maybe accumulated a lot of stuff. Maybe they caught, got caught up in the world and, and became worldly successful to that degree, which is nothing wrong with that. But the maturity hasn't kicked in yet. The ripened, ripening, the seasoning that's spiritual. And the other thing I want to leave you with this morning is embrace your social contract. You don't go into a party and put your hand in a bowl of nuts if you haven't washed your hands. So don't go out into the world if you haven't done your inner shower because individuals are only meeting your unresolved issues and your opinionated personality and the things that you haven't dealt with. Don't do it. Let them meet the real you, that childlike, loving, beautiful, untarnished, unadulterated being. And then you won't be a killjoy. You won't suck the air out of the room. You won't be triggered all the time. You'll walk with a supernal confidence of one that's not leaning on their own personality understanding, but one that's leaning on the Lord, the great law of life, leaning on the presence. God's got me. God is my life. 
I surrender to God. I surrender to love. I surrender to beauty. Use me. Shine through me. Express through me. Live through me. Sing through me. Dance through me. Speak through me. Hug through me. Be yourself fully through me. Activate the divine potential that is within me, which is God knowing itself as my life. And you know what you'll say every day? I'm just getting started. Because wherever you are on this continuum, you are barely scratching the surface. Because this continuum is infinite. And you are an illimitable, unlimited, infinite being. Rise up and act like it. Stop playing around desire to wake up from the intoxicated sleep and you discover there's been no progress in the world through the political system it's all come from people that has influenced the political system people that have woken up and then created trends and then potentates jump in front I'm not saying don't play in that system because when you vote, what you're doing, since I'll just shift into this for a second, when you're voting, you're putting a vibrational imprint on the world you want to live in. That's what you're doing. If you don't vote, you're allowing other people to imprint the newest fear. So whatever, whatever issues you're voting on, whatever people you're voting on, you have to hold your consciousness on what are my values, what is meaningful, what world do I want to live in? And then you're casting a vibrational vote. That's an aside, but I think it's very important. <laughs> hey, let's take a shower together. <laughs> now, those who do memes, don't put that meme out there <laughs> without context. <laughs> Reverend Michael's asking people to take a shower with him. Inner shower, prayer, meditation, inner cleanliness, next to godliness. That kind of shower. Oh, put a smile on your face and turn within. Hands facing upward is a sign of receptivity. Thumb and forefinger touching as a mudra of transcending egoic perception any sense of separation. Back is straight. It's not rigid. It's just straight so that the signal is I'm, I, I'm awake, I'm alert. I, I, this is important. I am respecting this moment. I'm respecting the living one. I'm expecting God. I'm respecting the life force that wants to know itself as my life. I am paying attention. I am rich enough to pay attention. And with your attention, mm, be aware of your intentionality, your built-in intentionality. Your built-in intentionality is that you have an inner urge to become more you. The presence of God, which is everywhere, wants to know itself as your life. So that is the real you becoming more you, more awake. Intend to wake up right now. The attention is on the vibration of your intention. At this precise moment, you are no longer a part of the intentionally deficient individuals. You're not suffering from intention deficit disorder. You have an intention. I'm allowing God, life, love, beauty, to be conscious of itself as my life. I'm waking up. 
This is the very first time I've ever practiced this because this is a new iteration of me. I listen with my entire being to the eternal broadcast that's happening everywhere. Let there be light and love and beauty. My sacred breath as an anchor keeps me present. And here I sit in the full awareness that all of the power and presence and love is right here. And I am allowing that which is to be the activity of my awareness, my awareness of it is expanding with every breath that I take. Embrace your intention to wake up to your glorious nature if the mind has drifted into the future or the past or inner fantasies or conversations. Become there, aware of your breath. It's happening presently. You embrace your intention and you begin again. Another couple of moments of sacred silence.
continue your introspection. It's leading us to transspection. Going beyond seeing with limited eyes and seeing with our pure awareness that we are the light that lights up every being that comes to the planet. Luminous beings, light and luminosity is everywhere. We allow ourselves to yield to the field of gratitude. We surrender to gratefulness. And we give ourselves permission to become so thankful and so grateful that our entire body chemistry is transformed. Toxicity is dissolved in the tonic, fruitful, vitalizing chemicals move through the body temple simply because we are grateful. If you need a boost, be grateful for anything at all in your life until you can simply be grateful full of gratitude. The recognition factor becomes so clear that our seeing, not through eyes, but through awareness, we see God everywhere. Beauty and love, order, harmony everywhere. And what we're looking at, we're looking with, so we're one with God. And it is from the depth of this awareness of unity consciousness that the word is spoken, allowing each and every one of us to be free today. Spiritually liberated from the constriction of limited thinkingness. That we're being made new in this moment. We hear the vitalizing dynamic sentence Behold, I make all things new. And this includes you, this includes us. In this moment. And so it is from this sense of unity that I have the privilege and the honor to speak the word for each and every one of us with the full awareness there is only one of us expressing in myriad ways distinct units of infinite, unique emanations of the Most High. I call forth divine wholeness, revealing itself as well-being and wellness. Wholeness, revealing itself as harmonizing and prosperity and all needs met. Revealing itself as transformational knowledge and creative intelligence moving through and as us. Safety and well-being. All of this is being spoken into existence for each and every one of us right now. Anyone who's had the urge to tune in is receiving this blessing. And anyone that they talk to, anyone they think about, any environment they go in is now radically changed for the better. We are the divine fiat of the spirit, ripe and mature with the spirit of the living one. Oh my God, how great thou art infinite, magnificent is thy holy name. Thy nature in us 
as us. I release this word. It's more than faith. It is a dynamic conviction that all of life is seeking to rush through us right now. And we're living in the dynamic yes factor. Yes, yes, yes. It's okay to be healed right now. It's okay to not get used to the way things have been. It's okay for you to be the next great version of yourself. It's okay. Everything's going to be all right. I give thanks for this and allow it to be so. Now and unto forevermore. And so it is. As we slowly open our eyes, we, whoever we're with, wherever part of the world you're in right now, if you're with some people gathered around and participating in this way of meditation service, just bow to each other and say, now, so be it. You're strong enough to be this vibration. Hmm. And this is a very important moment a moment in which you get to come now into practice. We've practiced meditation, and now you're going to practice the art and science of the law of circulation. You're going to give. You're going to share. You're going to radiate. You're going to shine. You're going to tithe. You're going to donate. You're going to make an offering. You're going to make a gift. You are a, ooh, humanity, human. From the Sanskrit means distributor. You are here to distribute your gifts. So practice now so that you can permanently have prosperity and it's not up and down. It doesn't fluctuate. You do that through giving. Turn within for just a couple of seconds and give thanks for whatever it is you have to give today. Regardless of the amount, just give thanks that you have something to give. We bless it. We saturate it with love, celebrating the Spirit, and release it without agenda, knowing that as we give, so shall we receive. And so it is. So in your givingness at this moment, you may use your cell phone, your mobile phone, and text the word GIVE to 424-321-6243. You can do that right at this moment. If you delay, your ego will, might get involved and later on, will become later on, become later on, and then you may forget it. So just do it now. Text the word GIVE to 424-321-6243. It's on your screen here. Choose the amount you want to give. You can even choose the regularity of your gift. You can give once a week if you like. You can do that right now with the right use of that technology. If you like to use the technology called Venmo, the QR code is right here on your screen. You take your mobile phone. You know how to do it. Shine in that direction. It'll take you right into the Agape International Spiritual Center so that you're coming to the right community that you're now participating in. It's at, if you want to go to at, Agape, International Spiritual Center, CTR. We're listed under charities. You can give that way through Venmo. You can do that right now. If you're on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and you want to go to our website and give, go to agapelive.com. Look at the donation banner. Choose your amount for today. And then check out. What you're really doing is you're symbolically checking in to the vastness of your own being and giving from the overflow. So there's a circulation that takes place. And by your giving, you have more to give on a regular basis. It's law. If you would like to mail in your donation, make your checks and money orders out to Agape International. Send it to Agape International, 8549 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1156, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. 
If you're obviously sending your letter, your note, your tithe, your gift from outside of the United States, put USA on the envelope. If you're extraterrestrial, put planet Earth. <laughs> it'll get here. Some nut is trying to get rid of post offices and stuff, but it'll get here. Ah, oh, I feel good. Life is magnificent. There you have it. You have the ways of giving. If you're here in the sanctuary and you want to give it a check or, 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 or cash, there'll be ushers as you exit and you can put it in the basket. Who do we have here? We have Tiffany Snow, great practitioner of agape. She's coming to highlight some of the wonderful things happening in our community. Good morning. Good morning, Victor. We have a few highlights for you today, and each of these are available at agapelive.com. So visit the Agape website at agapelive.com for our weekly offerings and for more details on all of this. All times listed are Pacific time. Tune in to Reverend Michael's Take Back Your Mind podcast. This week's guest is Martha Louise. Martha, whose father is king of Norway, is a physiotherapist, author, speaker, and spiritual entrepreneur in the areas of energy work and women's leadership and co-host of the Heart Smart podcast. And be sure to check out the next episode of Take Back Your Mind, Life Question of the Week, understanding the balance between mental health struggles and relationship dynamics with a depressed loved one this Friday. Watch or listen to Take Back Your Mind and the Take Back Your Mind Life Question of the Week with Michael B. Beckwith on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcast. And subscribe to receive alerts when new shows drop each Wednesday and Friday. Save the date. Agape is turning 38, so let's celebrate on Sunday, November 24th during the 9 and 11.30 a.m. services. We want this place packed. And for those of you who join us online, create your own anniversary party at home with friends and family. Make sure to capture the festivities on video and send to us. Stay tuned for all the details. Samos Agape, or Agape in Espanol, is in session again and invites you to join us every Saturday at 8.30 a.m. for meditation and affirmative prayer exclusively in Spanish on Agape's Facebook page. Reverend Michael and his partners at Nutrize are enthusiastic to share a groundbreaking development from Adaptazen, a moment they're calling the Elevation Evolution. Introducing Elevate Mushroom Complex and Elevate Plus, organic fermented mushrooms, their latest innovation designed to elevate your mind, body, and spirit to new heights. These products are based on the mushroom supplements Rev takes for the immune system, brain function, gut health, and longevity and were created as a transformative step forward in your holistic wellness. Crafted with precision and passion, this new Elevate line harnesses the power of organic fermented mushrooms to support your well-being in ways you've never experienced before. Visit Nutrize.com and get yours today. The Agape Prayer Ministry is available to you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Agape's practitioners are here to know and declare the truth about your life. Whether you're looking for support navigating this thing called life or ready to affirm your spiritual liberation, the powerful prayers from Agape's loving spiritual practitioners are here for you. Call 310-348-1270 or send an email to prayer at agapelive.com. Thank you. You're welcome, Reverend Coco. It's our very own Tiffany Snow, great actor, great uh, practitioner. Let's turn within this moment, let's give thanks for the outpouring of love through the offering today. It's love in action. And through this giving, those who are giving become channels for more receiving as well and that their prosperity is becoming more permanent because of the generosity that's flowing through their heart and soul. We bless this spiritual community known as Agape International. As you've heard, it's time to celebrate 38, and we're feeling that now. We give thanks that all of our needs are met and that we're just getting started as a community and we're about to launch into a greater expression of spiritual generosity. It's all happening now. And so it is. Amen. And so rise up. 
If you're in the LA area, you can make it into the sanctuary here by 11 a.m. and participate in the meditation service, and then the worship service begins at worship celebration. Fellowship service begins at 11.30 a.m. And then this next service is at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time, nine o'clock uh, worship service. So choose the service you want to participate in. You're online, have your friends join you. Let's do this. Let's be this. And again, for those who are uh, leaving cash or checks here, there's an usher in the back. They will receive you at the back. Hey, let's sing out. Let's, let's feel that we're forgiving everything. We're becoming so mature that nothing I'm sticks to us. We're able to let go. We're able to forgive that ourselves. We're able to forgive others. We're able to stay in forgiving 70 times 7 as a way of living. It's time to let go of the shame. The past, the past is, behind is behind us. I see oh, we see anew. We're ready. ready for I am ready. We are ready for a great transformation. I'm ready the urge within us is taken over. Life has a new vehicle to express through. That's me and you. We give thanks for this, and we allow it to be so, and so it is. Amen. Have a beautiful and wonderful day. You deserve it.